Hope you're doing good. Mark it back with another video. Back here to talk about the Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus. More importantly, the apps and certain system apps that have been updated over the past few days. So if you guys are interested in this video, if you guys haven't already, make sure to like the like button, subscribe to the channel, the notification bell. That way, that's my videos. It's all free. That way, we can sit back and see what's cracking. Now, let's get into the video. And the first thing we're going to talk about is, and I've already updated everything, so these are a lot of screenshots that I'll be showing you guys. If we come in here to my gallery, the first thing I want to talk about is a Google Play system update weighing in around 2.7 megabytes in size. Now, it doesn't outright change the update to like the April, you know, Google Play system update, but it does add additional updates on top of the March Google Play system update. So I would say definitely go ahead and update, re, you know, reboot your devices for the Google Play system update. I, of course, haven't noticed anything significant. Significant is probably just additional improvements, maybe potential bug fixes in the background pertaining to the Google Store in general, uh, or just Google services. And so I definitely suggest you guys update that. The next thing I want to show you guys before we get back into some more screenshots is in the good lock app if you guys use good lock for your samsung galaxy s24 devices or your galaxy devices in general you should have saw that clock phase was updated within the last few days and the version number is 3.1.7 and so how to figure that out or how to update your module if you haven't already is going to good lock then you come down here to clock phase and hit the more icon over here in the corner and you hit go to store once you do that you will see that upon scrolling down, what's new for One UI 6, and really One UI 6.1 specifically, is 3.1.7. And here are some of the things that they've added. Support for new fonts, added a weather item, support for frames on images, including GIFs or GIFs, however you want to say that. And so this just adds more customization in the clock face app and if you guys don't quite know what the clock face app does it basically has already pre-made pre-installed clock faces that you can use on your lock screen and these are ones people have created these are ones that samsung has created alternatively or additionally you have my clock down here for clocks that you can make now of course i haven't made none not a big thing that i get into but nonetheless, you can do that there. And of course, Studio is where you can do clock face for your Galaxy watches. And so you have some interesting watch faces in here. And if you wanted to create your own, you would start off by not leaving the app. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. You would click the plus icon here at the top. And upon clicking the plus button, this is where you can start off creating your own clock for your own lock screen so one of the things that samsung does a very very fantastic job at doing is giving us customization to personalize our phone so much to the point where every galaxy device can be indistinguishable from the next one and so i wanted to highlight that there and let's jump into the galaxy store so going back into the screenshots here here are the uh, if you guys hadn't already noticed, the Galaxy Store was also updated. We're looking at version 4.5.73.3. That is a new version that's available. It's going to ask you to update before you can even check out anything. And upon doing so, you will see these apps here. Digital Wellbeing, Bixby Vision, Photo Editor, and Samsung Find. These are the apps that were updated or that were immediately available after the Galaxy Place or the Galaxy Store had updated. And so if we come in here, the first thing we'll see, digital well-being. Enhanced layout. The main screen of digital well-being has been redesigned, making it easier to find the information you need, more content in your weekly report, and your weekly your weekly usage report now lets you know about unusual usage patterns, your peak usage times, and how you balance your screen time. So if we want to actually check that out real quick, we would go into settings. Uh, not in my modes and routines, but upon scrolling down, you should see your digital well-being right here. Now, I don't even know if I've actually tapped into this yet since actually having it, but this has been slightly tweaked and now as you see up here it shows the amount of time that's been 
uh, or screen time has been used primarily has been video, barely a half an hour on social media, two minutes in terms of other ones, 15 minutes on Samsung Internet Explorer, four minutes in Google Messages, hour almost hour and a half in YouTube. So you see, the main thing I do is do a lot of YouTube watching with some article reading from Samsung Internet. You got your screen time goal here. You got your app timers. You have your driving monitors, your walking monitors, your volume uh, monitors, your parental controls. And so this is the layout that has more or less been slightly tweaked. And if we wanted to go a little bit further, we can click in that the little graph icon at the top, and this gives you more granular look, more nuance and detail look into the activity that's been taking place on your phone. And this is what's also been further tweaked by that update. And so as you guys see, those are some of my, you know, raw stats as it were. And you can adjust your settings up here by clicking on settings. And then if you want notifications, you can do that. If you want digital well-being to pop up in your app screen, you can do that. And then of course you want to maintain your customization service and your usage data access. Keep all that on. If you don't want to use digital well-being like that, turn both of these off and that will limit as much activity for digital well-being as possible. And if you want to make sure it's updated, you can always click on it down there at the bottom, the about digital well-being, and it will also search for an update for you. That is digital well-being. Turning back in gallery, the next thing that was updated was the Bixby Vision. The performance of the text reader and accessibility mode has been improved and then fix bugs and optimize performance to improve usability. So Bixby Vision is kind of basically sort of the rudimentary version of Google circle to search as it were where bixby vision would read your screen and or you could well kind of sort of bixby vision what it really does is you would point the camera at something and then it would analyze based off of either taking a picture or what it captures in frame and then give you search results based on what you pointed it at that's what bixby vision was meant to do I don't know how many people really use it, so let me know down in the comment section below if anybody does use Bixby Vision. I don't, but it's nice to see that Samsung is still trying to take Bixby serious in the form of the, the vision use cases and it, it improves the text reader and optimizes the performance. So if you guys are using it, just know that it has been further in, uh, improved. The next app would be Photo Editor. Reorganize, layout, and improves selection method for spot color feature changed object erasers methods of selecting objects added mag uh, ooh, magnetic lasso option interesting so hopefully this does not break being able to erase the galaxy ai uh, watermark <laughs> because i know a lot of people like doing that just know that if you do erase the watermark it's still in the metadata on the photo that AI was used to generate that photo in some way, shape, or form. So just keep that in mind when trying to use the photo editor or an editor to erase the watermark from the AI. But other than that, if you're not using it for those things, you're just using it for general editing purposes. It has improved and reorganized the layout and the selection method of features and included in another selection, a selecting object, which is magnetic lasso. So those who use photo editor have added in the last update, here is with Samsung Find, where notify when left behind for wearable devices, lost mode, and set notification interval. Now, I do like that first one, the left behind. It's kind of similar to, I don't know if you if you guys have Apple devices, you have AirPods or you have a, an iPad. I don't think it does it with the Apple Watch. I have not noticed a notification for that, but like, let's say you walk you know, 20, 30 feet outside of um, your your AirPods or your iPad from your iPhone, your iPhone will pop up with a notification saying iPad left behind or AirPods left behind. That lets you know that, ooh, you know, unless you're at home, you get that notification, which doesn't make sense oftentimes or maybe at work. If you get that notification, it's good to, you know, make sure you have your belongings on you so that way you don't leave them and then they get lost or stolen. And so having that come over here to Android in some form of shape with Samsung Find is definitely, definitely a plus in the world of Samsung's ecosystem because now you can keep track of your devices on hand. I don't know if it applies to Galaxy Watches or not. That will be interesting to see, but I'm glad they added that along with Lost Mode 4. 
Samsung's Galaxy devices. And those are those updates. The last thing is I saw an article from Sam Mobile highlighting the fact that Samsung's software update received an update, which is kind of funny. So software update would just simply be, if you come into settings, this feature right here, software update, this actually received an update. I don't think I'm going to, of course, see it here. And maybe that's what the Google Play system was, maybe addressing the software update process, potentially. But it is funny that the software update also received an update. And that is and or takes care of the apps that get updated or that got updated over the last few days in the world of Samsung. The other thing I can highlight is Google Messages has been receiving a lot of updates the last couple of weeks. And this pertains to tweaks and changes that us as users, I guess, didn't like. And Google's kind of reverting some of that. And on top of that, RCS is looking to get some additional improvements over the course of time when it comes to, you know, uh, anti or oh, well, yeah, no, I think that no, that's air tags. But <laughs> but um RCS nonetheless is still receiving some additional security features over the course of the near future. So be on the lookout for that if you use Google Messages. I do, I like it. RCS is the thing when it comes to Android. And it's it's gonna be interesting to see how this plays out in the world of Apple when it comes to Apple and Android communicating with one another. Let me know down in the comment section below. Did you update your guys' apps and your devices? Are there any other apps that you may have taken note of that you received updates on? The comment section is open for discussion. But again, as always, you guys haven't already, make sure to like the like button, subscribe, turn the notification bell, so that way you know our videos, it's all free, so that way you and I can sit back to see what's cracking. Jermaine and Mike is signing out until the next video. Wait for